Select menus in Discord JS version 14 have changed quite a bit since they were first introduced. Instead of having a single select menu builder class, different select menu types have now been broken down into their own respective builder classes. So in today's video, I want to go over exactly how you can build all the different types of select menus. We're going to start off with the string select menu. With this, you can create custom options for your select menu, each with their own unique values. So let's create a simple pet selector, which will let us know what pets we choose. If you don't already have a Discord JS project set up, I'll have some basic starter files linked down below, which is exactly what I'm working with right now. Let's start by creating a file inside our commands folder, and I'm going to call this show pets.js. Inside this file, the first thing that we want to do is import Discord JS. And we're going to be importing a few things from this library. The first is string select menu builder. The next is string select menu option builder. Then the action row builder. This is required so that we can package our select menu builder and send it as a reply. And finally, we need component type. And this is required when we are listening for select menu interactions. Now let's go ahead and work on our slash command. The first thing that we are going to do is we are going to define the structure of our slash command. So create a variable called data. And inside this, we're going to set a property called name, which is going to be show pets. And then the description, which is going to be show pets using string select menu. Next, we need to create an asynchronous function called run. And from this function, we can go ahead and destructure the interaction object. Now let's go ahead and export our data and run function by saying module.exports and export an object with data and run. Now, before I write any code inside the run function, I'm going to paste this comment right here, which will give me IntelliSense for the interaction object. It's completely optional and is not really required. Now, as I mentioned, this is a show pets command, which is going to list all of your pets. So what we can do is we can create a variable called pets, which is going to be an array of objects. This object is supposed to have a label property and this label is going to be, well, the name. In this case, I'm just going to set it to dog. Then we have description, which is going to be shown under the label. So in this case, we can say something like this is a dog. And finally, there is a value. So if you're using a database or something, this could be potentially an ID that you could refer to. However, since I don't have a database, I'm just going to call this dog. Now I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this. And this one is going to be cat. Okay, so that's our pets defined. Now let's go ahead and create our select menu. So let's say const select menu. And we're going to set this to a new string select menu builder. As with all the other builders, we can chain a few methods to this. So let's start by setting a custom ID for this. So we can say set custom ID. And this will be important when we're listening for interactions from this select menu. So I'm going to set this to interaction.id. Again, you can set this to whatever custom ID you want to. Next, we need to set a placeholder. And this will be the text that actually shows up on Discord. So I can say make a selection. Next is an optional method. This is set min values. So you can set a minimum number of options that the person can choose. In this case, this could be two, one, but I'm just going to set this to zero. Now we can also do the same thing, but for max values. In this case, the maximum values cannot exceed the number of choices that we have here. So instead of hard coding two, because we have two objects, what we can do is we can just use pets.length and it's just going to use the number of elements within this array. Now, finally, the most important method is add options. Within this, we can actually pass in the string select menu option builder. So we can say something like new string select menu option builder and, you know, chain a bunch of methods. But since we already have an array with all of the properties that we need, what we can do is we can map through that array. So we can say something like pets.map and for each pet, we're going to return a new string select menu option builder. Then what we're going to do is we're going to set a label for this. So we're going to say set label and the label is going to be pet dot label. And then we can set a description. So set description and this is going to be pet dot description. I'm going to reformat my code. And finally, we also need a value for this. So I'm going to say set value and then we can say pet dot value. So that's all that we really need here. So what we can do is we can package the select menu into an action row. So let's define an action row and set this to a new action row builder. Then we can add components and this component is going to be our select menu. 
Now, finally, let's go ahead and reply to this interaction by saying interaction.reply and pass in an object. And within this object, we can set components to an array of components. In this case, we only have one element, which is this action row. So let's pass that in. So I'm going to go ahead and test this out. So I'm going to save my file and use nodemon. So my command handler has registered all the commands. So let's head over to Discord and try to run the command show pets. So as you can see, our select menu does show up with all the different choices. Now, one more thing that you can do to personalize this select menu is make use of emojis. So what we can do is we can go back to our code and where we define our pets, we can create a new property called emoji and set this to the emoji that we want to show. In this case for the dog, of course, I'm going to use the dog emoji and I'm going to do the same for the cat. So with the emojis now set as properties, we can go ahead and add them to our string select menu option builder. So let's chain another method called set emoji and set this to pet dot emoji. Now, one thing that you can do is you can even use a custom emoji to use a custom emoji. You're going to have to put the ID of the emoji instead over here. So the way you can get the ID of the emoji is back in Discord, go ahead and write a custom emoji. And before sending it, add a backslash in front of it. Now, if you send it to Discord, you're going to notice that you get the name of your emoji alongside its ID. So just go ahead and copy this and replace it like so. So we can save our file and try this one more time. If we now check, then you can see that we have custom emojis. However, if you notice, while nothing's actually happening, that's because we're not listening for interactions from this select menu. So let's go ahead and create a collector to collect any interactions. So what we can do is we can store this reply in a variable. So I'm going to say const reply equals to await interaction dot reply. And once the reply was sent, we can go ahead and create a collector. We can create a collector by saying const collector equals to reply dot create message component collector and we can pass in an object. Now let's go ahead and define the type of component that we're looking for. So we can say component type and this component type is going to be from component type dot. In our case, it's a string select menu. So we're going to have to choose string select. Now, if you followed my previous button and message collector videos, then you know you can even set a filter with conditions. In this case, we want our condition to match this custom ID right here and ensure the person who is sending the interaction is the person who ran the command. So in our filter, we have access to the interaction through the parameters. So we can say i.user.id must exactly match interaction.user.id. Also, the custom ID must match. So we're going to say and i.customID must exactly match interaction.id. We can also set a time limit for how long we want the collector to run. In my case, I want the time to be 60 seconds, so I can set the time property to 60,000. This is 60 seconds in milliseconds. Okay, we've now created our collector. Now what we're going to do is we can create an event listener to listen for whenever an interaction that matches this filter and matches this component type is received. So we can say collector dot on and then the event name is collect and we get the interaction object as the parameter. Now to explain how this is going to work, let's go ahead and console log interaction dot values. So let's save this file and go back to discord and try to run the command once again. Now we're going to make a selection of say dog and wait for some time. If we go back to discord and open up our terminal, you're going to see that we get an array that says dog. However, if we go back and make a selection for both cat and dog and we open up our terminal, you're going to notice that we get cat and dog. So what exactly are these values? Well, if you remember, these are the values that we set within our pets objects. So it's important that you set this to whatever identifier you want it to be. So at this point, we have the values. Let's just go ahead and reply to the user telling them what they have selected. So we're going to say if not interaction dot values dot length in this case, that means this array right here is empty and the person has emptied their choices. So what I can say is interaction dot reply. You have emptied your choices or selection, I should say. Then we can go ahead and return. However, if that's not the case, then we can reply to the user by saying you have now selected interaction dot values dot join and we're going to join them using commas so we can save them and restart our bot. Back in Discord, we're going to run the command once again. And over here, we can now make a selection saying dog and 
just wait. And now it's going to say you have now selected dog. If I now select cat as well, it's going to say you have now selected dog and cat. If I now empty my selection, it's going to reply and say you have emptied your selection. So that was string select menus. Now let's take a look at role select menus. So I can close out of this file and I'm going to create a new command called show roles.js. Now what I can do is I can actually go ahead and copy this entire file and just paste it over here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to empty the run function. Also from discord.js, I can go ahead and remove string select menu builder and string select menu option builder and replace them with role select menu builder. Inside the data object, I can go ahead and change the command name to show roles and show roles using the role select menu. Okay, we can now go ahead and work on our run function. This is going to be much more simpler compared to the string select menu. We can directly go ahead and define our role menu. So I'm going to say const role menu and set this to new role select menu builder. We can chain a few methods to this. The most important one is custom ID. And this is going to be interaction.id. Next, we can set the minimum values. I'm just going to set this to zero once again and maximum values to say about five. Actually, I don't think I have five roles in the server, so I'm just going to set this to maybe three. Now we can package this real quick and send it over to Discord using the action row. So I'm going to say const action row and set this to new action row builder. Then we can set components to role menu. Then let's go ahead and reply by saying interaction dot reply and pass in the components in an array. And this is going to be the action row component. I'm going to save this file and start my bot. Once the command is registered, I can go back to discord and try running show roles. You can see that we get a role select menu. So if we open it up, actually we have a ton of roles, so I didn't even have to set the max values to three. But again, if we select any of them, it's not actually going to respond. And the reason for that is we're not listening for the interaction. So back in our code, what we can do is we can store this reply in a variable. So I'm going to say const reply equals to await interaction.reply. Now we can create our collector. So I'm going to say const collector equals to reply dot create message component collector and pass in an object. Our component type is going to be component type dot. In this case, it's going to be role select now. And we can set our filter to the same thing that it was before. So i.user.id must exactly match interaction user ID as well as i.customID must exactly match interaction.id. I'm also going to set the time to 60 seconds once again. And that's our collector done. So let's go ahead and create an event listener for our collector. So I'm going to say collector.on and the name is collect. We're going to have access to the interaction object through the parameters. And once again, what I can do is if not interaction dot values dot length, then we're going to reply by saying interaction dot reply. You have emptied your selection and then we can return. However, the code below this is only going to run if they have made some choices. So we're going to say interaction dot reply. You have now selected and we can join the arrays using a comma. So we can say interaction dot values dot join and we can join using a comma. Now, you may be wondering what these values even are. Well, let's save our file and try to run the command once again. If I now make a choice like admin, well, it's going to say you have now selected then the ID. This ID belongs to the role itself. So now if I select multiple roles. Oh, actually, I'm limited to three, so I can go ahead and remove one of them. So you can see we have multiple role IDs. So with these role IDs, you can obviously do anything that you want to do. So that's pretty much role select menus. Let's now move on to channel select menus. So we can say show channels.js. Once again, we can go ahead and copy everything from show roles, paste it and replace the name of the command to show channels and show channels using the channel select menu. And we can also change the role select menu builder to channel select menu builder. Our custom ID looks fine, but there is one more thing that you need to do here. And that is you have to import channel type. I mean, this is optional, but it's one of the choices that I'm going to explain right alongside these methods. You can actually choose another method called set channel types. So by default, the user will be able to select pretty much any channel. This could be a voice channel, threads, or even regular text channels. 
However, we want to limit it maybe to text channels. So the way we can do that is we can say channel type. And over here, you can choose whatever channel type you want to limit the users to. In this case, it's going to be guild text, which is the regular text channels. Also, I'm going to rename role menu to channel menu. So I'm going to press F1 and say channel menu, and it will rename it everywhere it was listed. We can also change our component type to channel select. So that's pretty much it. So let's save our file and go back to Discord. And we're going to try running show channels. Over here, we have only text channels. So I can go ahead and select bots, logs. As you can see, it returns IDs. And these IDs belong to the text channels themselves. So you can do whatever you want with these IDs. You could store them in a database or you could maybe send a message to them. Anything that you want to do. Finally, let's take a look at user select menu. So I'm going to copy this code once again and create a file called showusers.js and paste the code. I'm going to rename channel select menu builder to user select menu builder. And I'm going to change the command name to show users using user select menu. I can also go ahead and remove channel type because we don't need that, meaning we can go ahead and remove the set channel types method completely. Once again, this method has min values and max values, so you can limit it to whatever you want it to be. Now our collector needs to have a component type of user select this time. And now let's save this file and try to run our command once again. So back in Discord, I'm going to run show users, and this is going to give us a user select menu this time. So now if I open the select menu, as you can see, it's only users. So if I select my name, it's going to give me my personal ID. And obviously it works with multiple users as well. So that's about it for select menus. Now I'd like to take this time to mention that I recently started a newsletter called Dev Notes, where I share stuff in the development space. So if you're interested in it, I'll have a link to it down below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.